So first, I'd just like to recognize that we're on unceded Coast Salish territory and uh, think about what that means and give thanks. Uh, my name is Tristan Markle. I am an organizer with the Vancouver Renters Union, and I'm just going to give a quick introduction to the event and then hand over uh, the mics to the panelists. And I just want to say that uh, we're all here because we care a lot about Heather Place in particular, and we want to think about Heather Place and its relation to uh, other developments through the city and the future of social housing in Vancouver and the province. Uh, I said, as I said, I'm an organizer with the Renters Union, and one of the reasons that we got involved with Heather Place and working with the residents is that the context is throughout Mount Pleasant and East Vancouver in particular, there, uh, there's a lot of similar things going on. In particular, repairs are often used as a pretext for eviction. And I'll just give a couple of examples of other buildings that the Renters Union has been organizing that are analogous but different. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes private developments where there's affordable rent uh, rental, uh, uh, they'll be bought up by a new developer, um, such as uh, one, eight, one 1800 Adenac Street, close to where I live in East Vancouver. And that was bought up by Aquilini. And over the past six months, a lot of people have been uh, rent evicted, been, been getting eviction notices. And what we've been doing is organizing together with the tenants so that they can keep their homes. And it's very difficult. And the laws aren't very good to protect uh, renters in market housing. So we face that. Similarly, uh, similar things are happening in nonprofit housing. <laughs> For example, uh, the Lions Manor is in Mount Pleasant on 6th Avenue, and there's about 35 seniors' tenants. And what happened there was there isn't the funding to fix the repairs uh, because there's so-called building envelope failure and problem with the balconies. And so what happened was the nonprofit provider didn't have the funding, and they took out a loan, and they tried to increase the rent on the tenants about 50%. And that was basically another form of eviction. Luckily, the tenants got together and organized and were able to, to stop it. But currently, that's going to the Supreme Court because the property uh, manager is bringing it to the Supreme Court to try to increase the rent again. Also, 1800 Adnac, the landlord is also bringing people to the Supreme Court to try to um, evict them. Uh, also, nonprofit housing can happen in different ways, such as conversion to market. So, another building we're helping organize was on 8th Avenue, 5778, and there was uh, it was uh, half people with disabilities. It was voice of cerebral palsy. And what happened was the building was operated by a nonprofit. And they didn't have the money for repairs. And it wasn't coming from uh, the province. And so the nonprofit operator decided to sell it. And they sold it to um, a man who owns Galaxy Capital Corp. And, he, he, uh, and the, the tenants were under. They're confused. They're told they had to leave. It was going to be demolished. It wasn't. When should we leave? Kind of similar to Heather Place. A lot of them left voluntarily, eventually some of them were forcefully evicted. And now it's converted to rental. The last people have been evicted, so that was sad because we came in last moment. But um, it's going to be market housing and the rents will increase threefold. So those are examples of non-profit housing where the rent eviction kind of thing is happening through different ways. And the last example is public housing. So we can lose low-income housing through public housing as we've seen with Little Mountain and as we're seeing with Heather Place. So that's just where we're coming from the, from the Renters Union. And what we believe is that repairs should be made with minimal impact on tenants. We think public housing, affordable housing is beautiful. It's quality housing. It should be protected. And there's no need to demolish it. And there should be repairs. Absolutely. Fix it, but with absolutely minimal impact on tenants. And secondly, we believe tenants have the right to self-organize to promote their interests, form unions as necessary, and not be targeted or persecuted in any sort of way for organizing to defend their own interests. And they should be able to defend their own interests as a, as a block and not have to, um, not have to be uh, told what to do by the government or anything like that. So thank you for your patience for my little intro and trying to contextualize why it is that we care so much about what's happening at Heather Place. But most of all, the important thing is the last thing I said, which is respecting the tenant's right to advocate for their own interest. So hopefully we can start a discussion about how to do that, and so on. And, uh, so, and, and when, so I'm going to pass on to Barry, and we're going to have a, we're going to have a panel, and then at the end, 
we're going to have tons. We really want to have the dialogue with people in the in the audience. So Barry is an activist with Community Advocates for Little Mountain, and uh, and which was an important struggle, and and there's lots to learn from that. And we're really grateful to have Barry come to talk today. So I'm going to pass on the mic to Barry, and thank everyone for coming on this rainy day. Metro Bank is the owner of Heaven Place. And uh, they've proudly announced that uh, uh, there's going to be an increase in the number of uh, uh, places, affordable places at Heaven Place. Um, uh, this is in the context of the fact that they're only guaranteeing that a third of the people who live there will be able to move back at the same rent. The other two thirds don't have official subsidies and most recently, uh, what uh, Metro Vancouver Housing has said is, well, we don't, just don't know what rent we would charge you if you wanted to move back. Uh, it could be market rent. So in fact, there's the threat there of losing two-thirds of uh, the, the current um, affordable housing in, in that uh, area, and then they might add five more units. So it's, uh, it's really uh, uh, a rather extreme charade 